All right, Todd Bill and I apologize. I'm a lot under the weather here, but the show must go on so I continue to work. So just pardon me if I sound worse than I normally do. All right, so thinking about this matchup, right? It's going to have to be the final one right here. I uh, appreciate you guys supporting the content this week, really working this LSU versus Oklahoma on both sides. You know what I am, man? I'm like a fight promoter. I'm trying to find both teams' strengths, strengths and weaknesses uh, and have y'all be able to enjoy the game and look for different stuff in that manner, right? But if you're some type of female chick dude or something like that, man, you need not apply. Please go to another channel because there's no bias or anything involved in this. I'm covering football. I'm just doing my job, so just relax. All right, so Oklahoma's normally playing – uh, press man coverage in the boundary, right? Hands on man. You see Parnell Motley right here. If I have to be honest about the situation, Parnell Motley, I think is doo-doo trash. I think Trey Brown on the other side and the safeties, Patrick Fields and, and well, it's not going to match b- about Delarian Turner yell, but, um, whomever replaces him, but Brendan Riley house on the inside. I think it could be a long day for these guys, but I really believe in Oklahoma's defensive front. And they're going to have to dedicate extra bodies back there. So they're going to have to be able to keep two men back. But if you see right here up into the boundary, press man coverage, Parnell Motley, right? Shoots damn near a two-hand jam. What is he doing right here? Like, I know Alex Grinch isn't teaching this. Alex Grinch is one of the best defensive minds in the sport. He's not teaching something like this. This dude is a senior. He's up here playing patty cake, right? Shoot that left-hand jam, ride Dalen Charlotte to the sideline, let the extra – let the uh, sideline act as an extra defender. He already out leveraged right here playing patty cake. He beats the patty cake jam, right? And he's already on you. Pause. If we see right here, he turns to locate. You turn to locate. This is actually not that bad a coverage from, from uh, Pardo Motley, but he always seems to be a day late and a dollar short, right? Day late and a dollar short. Unable to compete right here. The ball just goes right by him. All right, you see into the boundary again right they're playing into the boundary i believe you have i think it's Parnell motley actually over here into the boundary so that means trey brown's probably out of the game right here you got freshman Jaden davis out here who's a very intriguing prospect in my opinion can't wait to see him work uh next year in a more prominent role but you're not gonna be able to compete against lsu with this type of coverage you're just not right they're going to eat you for breakfast. They're going to eat you for breakfast probably even if you play what you need to play. But if you see right here, um, Patrick Fields with with the cushion, right? You got to be hands-on man across the board. They're just going to take these quick slants. Uh, We'll get to that in a little bit here, but just check this out. These guys have the best yards after the catch wide receivers in the country to me. So this is just an RPO, leverage RPO. You can see the line block and run right here. Um some type of zone. My man abandons that bad boy. He sit out there just because of the leverage. It's a great throw. Look at the space, right? I like Oklahoma State's passing outfit. I think it's always a very good outfit in the simple fact of um, how some of these concepts are derived. So you got to give Oklahoma credit for that. A lot of these teams in the Big 12 are very good offenses with very good offensive minds. So their stuff might be a little bit more skewed than people get it, give it credit for because they're going against a lot of great offenses. However, this is poor defense right here. You're not allowing your guys a chance to compete, right? He has a coming down, break, break down, tackle in space. And that's against this guy who's a very good wide receiver, but he's not Justin Jefferson. He's not Jamar Chase. He's not Terrace Marshall. He's not Thad Moss. You get what I'm saying right there? Hands on man, you got to be able to compete in that manner. Here we go again with one of them slant fade concepts. Uh, LSU has this in his playbook as well. So being able to match up safeties on some of their inside receivers, that's what they excel at, right? So you'll be you'll see Justin Jefferson in here, who's top five wide receiver in college football. Jamar Chase, top three wide receiver in college football. Uh, you see a lot of these guys in, in the slot because they want to get those kind of matchup problems. So I know Delarian Turner, y'all won't be playing, but just in general, anybody who's out there with them may face the same type of uh, scrutiny as well because there's just so much cushion back there. Got to be able to have some overhang defender on on them, right? You need to be able to sneak Brendan Riley Howes out here, right? Allow him to compete, at least get hands-on mans at the beginning, a hands-on man at the beginning, and then um, allow somebody to work over the top. But if you're able to just match up strong safety, this is more than likely what you're going to get right here. Look at him. He's shooting two-hand jams from far out, right? That's like shooting a two-hand defense in basketball from far out. It makes no sense. You see right here, he's unable to compete 
in this fashion. And you probably wouldn't expect him to be able to compete in this particular fashion, to be honest with you. But it's be even worse against LSU. This is a long pass, a great pass right there. And you can expect that a lot from LSU. All right, close quarters coverage. 90% of the passes LSU wants to throw, they want to do it right here between the hashes. They take great talents and put them in oversimplified schemes, and you cannot compete with that. You got to get hands on men and disrupt the timing. So this is close quarters coverage, but it's a free release. So you're there without touching. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say that. I can't say that. I'm going to get myself in trouble right here. Not on the content. I'll say it on the live stream, though. See right here? Close quarters coverage, not even touching somebody. You're not actually doing it. If you catch my drift, my drift right here. But look, that's just you can't compete in that manner, right? So if this were Jamar Chase, you know what he's going to do? Just what this guy did. <laughs> Going to break a tackle, and he's probably going to be even off to the races even more because he's a better same deal right here. When Alice Grinch gets his type of cornerbacks in there, it's going to be lights, lights out at Oklahoma because he's going to know he's going to have that front ready. He just needs these guys. He needs to be able to have guys that he can trust to put hands on, man. Close quarters coverage, opening up the gate right here. Trey Brown actually does a good job on this one. Well, not really. This probably should have been a. This probably should have been a, a pass interference call, but he didn't get called right there. He's holding clearly, but he's being physical at the very least. But this is poor technique holding. But guess what? If they don't call it, it don't count. Got there too early and everything, but he's being physical. You got to be physical with these LSU receivers. And you got to have people over the top. All right, here you go. Working into the boundary, the great Jamar Chase. When it gets DJ Daniel, you see DJ Daniel. Gets his Parnell Motley on with a free release. No hands on man. Gets banged and cooked, right? Cooked him to the outside, bent him back. Look at the separation anxiety. Quick, easy work for a guy like Jamar Chase, who's an absolute animal after the catch. They'll do this all day long. People think they want to just shoot the ball downfield all day, spray it around the yard. They'll nickel and dime you to death. Work the quick game. Work a little bit of the run game. They'll give you... Whatever you allow them to give you. All right, here's something that I love about LSU's offense. If they see a single high post safety, they're going to take the path of least resistance and shoot the ball down the field no matter what. Like You can almost goad them into it. If you want them to shoot the ball down the field and you think you have good corners, all you have to do is play a single high post safety, and they're going to automatically check to whomever has the the best matchup for them to go downfield. So you see these guys right here, they just kind of run dummy slant routes, right? This is what they went to. They're not even going to run it hard. All right, right out the line of scrimmage. You can tell these guys barely running anything right here. Burrow knows where he wants to go the entire time. Uh, he's just keeping the free safety Richard LeCount at home with his eyes. But this was a bad throw right here. I think the timing may have been thrown off a little bit. But this probably could have been a touchdown right here. Tyson Campbell beat extremely bad on that one. But that's just something that I saw on film. And I see it on film the entire season. They will go to that time and time again if you give it to them. I love these bunch concepts that they run. Got a couple of out routes by Jefferson and Moss. Got kind of a clear out route going on right there. And I believe you have it's kind of a quick curl. And they'll run this bad boy extremely fast when they get out, get on first down and not even really allow you time to set up. You see right here, Georgia doesn't really have time to set up. That's why you got to be hands-on man. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about your zone coverage and, and, and lining yourself up. If you just play hands-on man, you know everyone has a man and it should be easy to set. But get these guys the ball out in space. What did I tell you? You got to be able to tackle out in space. I think that's what's wrong with Oklahoma's defense still, in my opinion, with guys like Brendan Riley Howe still unable to really tackle in space. Love the creativity with the LSU's offense. You can see right here, not allowing Georgia defender to get off to the sideline. <laughs> Quick snapping on him. Got Clyde Edwards Hilaire out here, the running back. And you got Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, where he would normally be at, at a running back position, just running a simple out route. Just a way to quickly line up and run a play, get their guy out in space. Look at this, breaking Eric Stokes' ankle for no reason. He, he's done, right? Break dancing. 
He took up a new line of work. Got Justin Jefferson out in space. It's just a well-organized offense with some of the best talent you'll ever see as the back. I even got to give credit to the offensive line in certain instances. Just the entire setup itself, man. So uh, it's not all about shooting the ball down field with LSU. They will nickel and dime you to death. So got to be able to take away that quick game. Got to be able to work that. I honestly don't really see that happening from Oklahoma. So that front seven needs to be getting after it. Um, to a certain degree on timely blitzes, but you got to dedicate more bodies to me to the past game to help out a secondary that I just don't think can compete straight up with LSU's offense. But the same can be said on the other uh, the other way as well, right? Oklahoma has a vast offense full of some of the best concepts. To me, it's still the best offense in the country, the best ran offense in the country uh, with the power run game, the quarterback getting involved in the power run game. Uh, you got a lot of vertical concepts, but man, they will also take that quick game stuff with some guys who can break some tackles and really take it down the field. So it's going to be a really good matchup. I can't wait to see it on Saturday. Uh, holla at your boy. May do some live streaming before that. We can really talk about this um, in detail if I'm able to make it to that particular live stream. All right. Make sure you join uh, and support the channel, right? Starting at just $4.99 a month, you guys can join and become members of the channel. And then uh, we can get it done from there. All right. With that being said, it's your boy Murph, the Underground King, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. Yo, thanks for watching quality content. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, get all the notifications, but moreover, make sure you join. Starting at $4.99 a month, just $4.99 a month, you can get exclusive content from your boy here at Top Billing. You know me, the Underground King, giving you those exclusive chats, exclusive rumors and news and all the innuendo and hijinks you love from your boy you can get it exclusively all right let's go what more can i say top billing, top billing.